Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Boy, what a difference a year makes. Welcome to Moreland Presbyterian Church. I'm Brian Marsh, the pastor, general troublemaker here. And uh, welcome to Christmas Eve worship. We are back in our space a year ago. Those of you who may have joined us here in person, uh, we were in a slightly different venue. We were out in the parking lot. And given the weather this year, I'm much more thankful to be in here. But we're so glad that you're here and uh, so thankful to have a chance to gather together on this special night, on such a special occasion, in times that for understandable reasons so often keep us apart, to have the chance to be together in the same space and to be together to celebrate an incredible gift of grace. Whether Moreland is your regular community of spirit or you are here with us visiting from out of town, from the neighborhood, our hope is that as we are gathered here together tonight, first and foremost, you would feel welcome. You would feel comfortable. You would feel free to simply be yourselves and to enter into this experience, this time, this space in the ways that are meaningful and memorable for you. Moreland is a community of ordinary people, imperfect people. We're an ordinary imperfect church and yet we are connected by an extraordinary and perfect love, a love that gives us light, that gives us life, that gives us hope. And our hope is that each of you tonight and us together would experience that love in a powerful and in a comforting and encouraging and transformative way. And that we would then feel empowered to share that love with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, with our community. So again, welcome. It's great to have you here with us. It's great to have all who are joining us online on Facebook Live as well. Merry Christmas to you out there. And it's wonderful to have that kind of connection as well, to know that all of us who are gathered here together in person are connected with others around us. So now as we enter into this time of celebration this evening, We'll do that first in music and then in the lighting of the candles of our Advent wreath. So I'd like to invite the Erickson family to come forward as Brian Robertson calls us to worship.
Love comes to us at Christmas. Love comes to heal our souls. Love brings an invitation. That our hearts might be made whole. As we gather at the stable. In the darkness, glad and grateful. For the sacred in our midst, for wonder and delight. Christ is born in us this night. Tonight we offer the light of hope, peace, joy, and love to illuminate the door of welcome to the wondrous one. And we add the brightest light of all, the light of love in the Christ child. May this light also shine in our hearts, in our lives, and in our community. May this light awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room for us. There is room in this inn for all God's wondrous children, all shining lights in our world. O oh, come, let us adore the light of love in the Christ. Amen. I invite us to stand together to sing our opening carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. Let's join together in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of this night, the gift of this place, the gift of this time, the gift of togetherness. We pray that as we lift our voices in song and open our hearts in wonder, that we might sense your presence ever present with each breath, with each heartbeat, in song and in silence, in story, in all that we engage this evening. May we be engaged by you, the light of love, the warmth of wonder, the gift of grace. And we pray in Christ's name, amen. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole Roman world. The first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All the people were instructed to go back to the towns of their birth to register. 
And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David, Bethlehem, in Judea, because Joseph was at the house and lineage of David. He went to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her delivery. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She put him in a simple cloth, wrapped like a receiving blanket, and laid him in a feeding trough for cattle, because there was no room for them in the inn. Our next carol is Joy to the World. Let's stand together once again. There were shepherds in the area, living in the fields and keeping night, keeping night watch by turns over their flock. The angel of God appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them. They were very much afraid. The angel said to them, You have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you, news of a great joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in David's city, a savior, the Messiah, has been born to you. Let this be a sign to you. You'll find an infant wrapped in a simple cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of, of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the heavens, and on earth, peace to all, on whom God's favor rests. Our next carol we will remain seated for. Angels we have heard on high. Angels we have heard
When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see this event that God has made known to us. They hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Once they saw this, they reported what they had been told concerning the child. All who heard about it were astonished at the report given by the shepherds. Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The shepherds went away, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. Good evening. I would like to invite all children, their parents too, if they would like, to come up here. I'm going to be reading a story today. I don't want to take my mask off because kids will be in here. Um, I'm going to be reading a story today that's got some lovely pictures and I'd love to share them with you. So come on up. Amy. Anyone else brave? Here we come. Go ahead and have a seat. Not there, sweetheart. It's on the floor. It's on the floor there. That'd be good. Thank you. That's perfect. Hi. Have a seat. Oh, very nice to see you, Emerson. Just right there is fine, sweetheart. Oh, so good to see you guys. You can turn this way because you'll be able to see the, the pictures. Turn and face me. Is this going to work with the mask? Yeah. Why don't you scoot back just a little bit, sweeties? Okay. So if you don't know me, my name is Sarah, and I work with the children here at the church. So who finds waiting hard? Yeah, <laughs> Waiting is really hard. And it seems like this time of year, there's waiting after waiting after waiting, right? Are you guys waiting for something? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes waiting is easier if you know what's coming. And maybe even if you don't know exactly what's coming, but if you know it's going to be something wonderful. So I have a story about that. It's a story of the first Christmas. And as I read it, I want you to look at the pictures. And I want you to see if you can recognize any of the people or the animals from that Christmas story. You take a look and let me know, Emerson. Little one, we knew you'd come is what it's called. We hoped, we dreamed, we watched for you. We counted the days till you were due. We waited how we longed for you and for the day that you were born. Little one, we knew you'd come. It was late, the time had come. The time had come for you, my love. You'll be here soon, we're ready for you. And for the day you were born. Little one, we knew you'd come. By silver star and golden moon, at break of dawn you came. 
kiss your nose, those tiny toes, on the day you were born. Little one, we knew you'd come. People were sleeping. We didn't care. Good news, we sang. Our baby is here. Our baby has come, our darling one. Shepherds. Oh, the day you were born. Little one, we knew you'd come. This is sheep, the shepherds. Kiss and cuddle and love that baby, scoop that baby up, and softly sing a lullaby on the day you were born. Little one. We knew you'd come. Look who else is coming. And every year, we remember you. We sing carols. We give gifts. We decorate trees. And sometimes, just seeing another baby can remind us of God's perfect love. Oh, how we thank heaven for you and the day that you were born. Little one, we are so glad that you've come. And that's the end. Friends, not only are we thankful on this night to celebrate the coming of God's love and light in that little child in Bethlehem, in Jesus, we get to celebrate tonight with another little child, and his name is Henry, and Henry has come with his family tonight to be baptized. And so what I'd like to invite you all to do, we'd love for you to stay up close so that you can see the baptism. I would just ask you to move down to the floor here and find a seat down here. Yeah, you can sit right on the floor. You can do that in church, it's okay. And so on behalf of our church leadership here at Moreland, I invite Henry James Hamlin to bring his parents, Colleen and Jim, and his grandparents, Maddie and Chuck Toombs, up to the front here for the celebration of his baptism. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Jesus said centuries ago, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them 
in the name of God the Creator, God the Christ, God the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow everything that I've taught you. And remember, I am with you always, till the very end of days. When we come together to celebrate a baptism, we are celebrating one of the symbols of our tradition that we have carried with us for generation after generation. As water is poured out, the waters of baptism, we are reminded of a lot. We're reminded that just as water is the greatest element in our earth, it's what makes up most of us and our bodies, we are reminded that God's love has always been and will always be the center source of our lives. And so whenever we celebrate baptism and this washing over of water, it's like the washing of living water, God's life-giving love to us in Christ. And it makes me wiggly too, Henry. <laughs> Woo! The man is almost done talking. <laughs> You're being very patient, Henry. The other thing that we celebrate and remember is that the same spirit, the same presence of God that descended upon Jesus when he was baptized is the exact same spirit that is here with us now and within each of us and is made known to us and we're reminded of that spirit again as we pour these waters of baptism. So Henry is being presented for baptism by his parents, Jim and Colleen. And this is an extension of our church family here at Moreland. This is, part, this is a celebration of the universal body of Christ. And also by extension, this body of Moreland Presbyterian Church. We are extended family to you all. And that is something that is a great joy and great gift for us. And so as we enter into this celebration, Colleen and Jim, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions as a way to reaffirm your faith. Is Jesus the one whose love gives you life and the one whose example you seek to follow in your life? Yes. yes. Great. And do you desire for Henry to be raised in the experience and knowledge of that love of Christ so that he would grow in, a, in this love and desire to live it out in his life, do you? Yes. yes. You all have a part two. Would you please stand? In our tradition, baptism is an act of the whole community, whoever is gathered at the given time. And so I ask, do we as friends as members of the beloved community of Jesus Christ and this community of faith here at Moreland, do we promise to support and nurture dear Henry and his parents, Colleen and Jim, in spirit, in prayer, with great love, encouraging them to live out the love of Jesus in faith, with hope, and to continue growing in that love? Do we? That's awesome. Please be seated. See this, Henry? Agua. Do you know Henry's first word was agua? Yeah. Let's pause for a moment to pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for the gift of your presence. We're thankful for the gift of water. It makes us who we are. It makes this world what it is. And it is such an amazing and miraculous and beautiful gift and a powerful sign of your ever-presence with us. 
your presence of love that is the center of who we are and how we live. It is what also is a sign that binds us together in love. And so we pray that as these waters become the waters of baptism, by your presence, your spirit, that you will bless dear little Henry and bless Colleen and Jim with an ever-present reminder of your ever-present love in their lives. And may we all give thanks for your ever-presence in our lives and in our world as well. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So, yeah, if you all family would come right up here, that's great. You ready to get wet, Henry? Agua. All right, here we go. Well, Henry James, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of God the Creator, God the Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And may the blessings of God be with you, within you, upon you, this day and every day, Henry. May you know that you are loved and you are love. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Henry James, you're the newest member of our extended family. <laughs> and, and wherever you roam, as you return to California, as you come back here to visit in Portland, everywhere you go, know that you have family. Family who is thinking of you, holding you in our hearts with love and with hope. So blessings to you, Henry, and blessings to you, Colleen and Jim, and to you, Maddie and Chuck, too, proud grandparents. Let's welcome Henry into the family. <laughs> if you had known, you would have worn your swimsuits, right? Well, friends, as we were just saying, as Sarah just shared in the story, and as we've just seen with dear Henry and his baptism, that Christmas is a celebration of finding life, of finding life sometimes in the ways that we don't expect, in the places that we don't anticipate. And whether that's in the story of a savior coming in a tiny little package, a tiny little child, or whether that's the surprises that we encounter in our everyday lives. The people who we befriend, the people who surprisingly befriend us, the things that appear in our lives that we couldn't have predicted in a million years. I imagine you can begin to name some of the surprising gifts that you've experienced in over a year and a half of pandemic. We couldn't have imagined that with masks on, we would be gathered in here tonight and not only get to hear the old, old story once again, but to see a vision of it enacted in a beautiful little one who's come to us as a light. Jesus said he is the light of the world. Jesus said something else. Well, he said a lot. But did you know that he also said that you are the light of the world? Each of us are shining stars in this world. We want to give you a little gift for Christmas to remind you of that light that you are, that light that Jesus is.
Like the gift of the Christ child, it's a small gift, but it has great meaning. In case you can't see it, what is this? A star. Yes. A paper star. But this is a star that you can hang on your Christmas tree, you can put in a window, you can hang from your lamp as a constant reminder, not only of the light, the star that is the presence of Jesus, but that each of you, each of us, is a light in this world. So as you go back to sit with your parents, Sarah has a gift for each and every one of you. I invite you to take one. What? If you're, if you're a child. Sorry, adults, you have to open your presents tomorrow. <laughs> but if you're a child, we want you to have one of these stars and to remember that you are stars as well. You know, one of the surprises that came to me this Advent and Christmas season was the surprise of discovering Christmas on the floor of an apartment in Selwood. And what I mean by that is simply this. Yesterday, I had a chance to spend about an hour or so on a carpeted floor with an 18-month-old boy named Shazad. Shazad and his parents, Hafsa and Noor, arrived here in the United States as refugees from Afghanistan several months ago. They've been on an incredibly long journey, but a journey that led them to Oregon and eventually to a motel in Gresham, and as of Wednesday evening, to an apartment in Selwood. This has been made possible through a village of people who have heard of the needs of Afghan refugees, individuals and families and who in the spirit of that light, that star of Christmas, have thought creatively and opened their hearts and their resources and their lives creatively and generously to make a way for a young family, who by the way are expecting their second child in a couple of months, to be welcomed into our neighborhood as I was playing with little Shazad and he was showing me his soccer skills, which are already pretty incredible, I was taken by his eyes, his smile, his occasional laughter, his desire to engage me in a play, game of hide and seek, in the simple joy of being in the present moment even with a complete stranger. And to me, Shazad was emanating, radiating the light of love that we celebrate at Christmas, as were her, his parents. And it's really an honor and a joy for Moreland Presbyterian, along with other partners in our neighborhood, to be the welcoming community for this dear family. A main way that this welcome was made possible was through the generosity of gifts from this faith community and from other communities and other neighbors. 
as we take a special Christmas offering tonight, we do it in this spirit of knowing that as we open up our hearts and our resources in our lives, those gifts can have an impact far beyond what we can even imagine, what we can even anticipate. The gifts tonight will be going towards needs in our direct community. Not only Shazad and his family, but others who are needing shelter, who are needing food, employment, who are needing relationship and encouragement and support. We're thankful to be a community of faith that is connected with incredible partners right here in this neighborhood and city who are helping to meet those needs and meet our neighbors in need right where they live. So I invite us now to open our hearts, to open our lives, to open our resources, and to give thanks to the giver of all good gifts by presenting a special Christmas offering. Gracious God, you are the giver of all good gifts. And we thank you for the generosity of this neighborhood, this city, this community of faith, and so many others who are seeing needs left and right, needs we couldn't imagine and are coming together to meet those needs in tangible expressions of the light of your love. May these gifts given generously tonight bless both those who will receive these gifts and those who give them. May we give thanks that truly the greatest present on this night and every night is presence. Amen. We hope that you uh, have a candle or were given a candle as you entered this evening. It's been a tradition for my whole life and for generations that on Christmas Eve, as we're remembering the light of divine love in the Christ child, that we ignite lights and that we share light with each other. We'll be doing that this evening as we sing 
the beloved carol, Silent Night, Holy Night. The light will come down the center aisle for the sake of safety. If you have an unlit candle, tilt it into the flame. Don't do the opposite. (laughs) Once you have the flame, just keep it up upright and the next person can lean their candle in and we'll pass the light out to the side of the aisles. We invite you to sing the carol together. We invite you to listen and simply bask in this space and in this time and in the light of love as it fills this space and fills our hearts once again. It's just a little light, it's a little light of mine and of yours, but when they're lit and joined together, 
It creates something beautiful and extraordinary. I invite you to stand. And as you're able, lift up your little light. And as we celebrate Christmas tomorrow, remember this image from tonight. Remember that you are lights in this world, shining like stars in the universe. Remember that you are loved, that you are love, and that through the moments where we need to cry, through the moments where we need to sigh, through the moments where we want to sing, this light shines whether we feel it or not, even whether we see it or not. Remember, each and every one of you, and we together, with Christ, are the light of the world. Oh, come, let us God's children say, Amen. Amen. And now, friends, on this Christmas, may the peace of Christ, the peace of Christmas, be with you all. As we go from this place, I invite you to share that Christmas peace with each other. And you can blow out your candles at any time. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And blessings be upon you and peace be with you. Amen.